Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have an interesting problem, again, for an entrance test somewhere around the world, and in particular for the JEE advanced test. It's a physics problem, it deals with mechanics and specifically with gravity. We have three masses, a large mass, M, which is spherical, and placed in line with two smaller masses, little m and little m, and those are connected with a massless rod. They're all kept in a line, and at the moment that the left mass here is at a distance 3L, where L is the length of the rod, 3L the distance from the large mass, at that point the tension in the rod is equal to zero. If m is equal to k times large m over 288, so we're trying to find the value for k such that this equation is such that the tension on the rod is equal to zero. For a moment you might think, well, how in the world do I start on this? But then you have to realize that the attraction due to gravity between the closer mass and this large mass is greater than the force of attraction between the farther away mass and this mass. That means that the force on this mass would be greater than on this mass, so there would be tension on the rod. That tension, of course, may be negated to some extent by the fact that this mass is attracted to that mass, so it gets a force in this direction, and this mass is attracted to this mass, which gives you a force in this direction. So there's a total of four forces. So first of all, we have a force between these two, like here, between this mass and that mass. We have a force between this mass and this mass. Then we have a force from this mass onto that mass and a force from this mass onto that four mass. So there's a total of four forces that are acting on one another gravitationally between the three masses. Notice that this causes tension and this force causes compression, this force causes compression, and this force causes compression. So those three forces cause compression and this force gives a tension and at some point the tension force must equal the three compression forces for the tension on the rod to be zero. All right, so let's go ahead and work it out that way. So we can say that zero is equal to the tension force. Let's call this tension and let's call this compression one, compression two, and compression three. So minus compression one, minus compression two, and minus compression three. All right, let's go ahead and try to figure that out. First of all, we get zero is equal to the tension force, which is g little m big M divided by the distance between them squared. That would be three times the length of the rod quantity squared. Then we have the compression force, so it would be minus g m big M divided by, the distance here would be four times the length of the rod, so it would be four times the length of the rod squared. So now we have the tension force minus the first compression force, minus the second compression force, which is the force between the two, acting on this mass, pulling it this way. So that would be equal to g little m little m divided by, and that would be l squared, and then minus the compression force caused by this, that would be g m little m over l squared. Well, that should equal zero if this condition is true. So, how do we do that? Well, first of all, let's see. Well, let's go ahead and work this out and see what we get. And so we have zero is equal to, um, well, first of all, we can get rid of all the g's because we have a g in every term. We can get rid of the L squared in each term. So this L squared, that L squared, this L squared, and this L squared. This becomes 1. So then we have M big M divided by 9 minus M big M divided by 16 minus little m squared and minus little m squared. So now, Let's go ahead and combine these two, find the common denominator, which is 9 times 16, which is 144. So this is 0 is equal to 16 little m big M minus 9 little m big M over the common denominator of the product, which is 144, minus 2m squared. And now, I take a look over here and I have a relationship between little m and big M. I can solve this for big M. 
I'll come up here and say that big M is equal to 288 times little m divided by k and replace that over here for the big M's. If I first combine them, so I got 0 is equal to 7 little m big M over 144 minus 2m squared. So now I come over here and when I replace big M by what I have over there, so I have 7 little m big M is 288 little m divided by k and divided by 144 minus 2m squared and that whole thing is equal to 0. So now I have 288 divided by 144 which is 2 times 7 that's 14 so 0 equals 14m squared divided by k minus 2m squared so I need a k over here, so I have 0 is equal to 14m squared minus 2km squared divided by k. Now I can get rid of the denominator, k, and now I have this equal to 0, which means that therefore 0 is equal to 14 minus 2k, or 2k equals 14. Oops. I hit myself, 14, or k is equal to 7. And that is the answer of that problem. Now, we're looking for an integer between 1 and 9, so that seems to make sense. And notice that the whole idea was to understand all the forces of gravity acting on the three masses. We have the force between this mass and this mass, which pulls on the rod, because that's stronger than the force between this mass and this mass. So, um, this will actually push the two masses together, this will actually pull away from it, so this causes tension, this causes compression, and then we have the two forces acting on each of the two masses. This mass pulls on this mass, pulling it that way, this mass pulls on this mass, pulling it this way, giving it a compression force as well, and therefore the result is as follows, k equals 7, and that is how it's done. So those stars then? <laughs> I guess in a way you could look at them as stars, except the one difference is that that's connected with a rod, so you wouldn't have two stars connected with a rod. It's still a little interesting in the two forces here that they're both equal and opposite to one another, so they pull the two together with that force. So there's definitely two compression, there's two compression forces. This mass pulls on this one and this mass pulls on this one and this mass is being pulled into the rod by this mass right there. So three compression forces and one tension force. That's how you do it.